we are here. Remar Review, the only, the only company in the world doing it like this for you guys. And I'm super excited because today we have, of course, our medical surgical nursing questions. Absolutely. We're going to bring you five NCLEX style questions. So go ahead, share this video. If you made it live, just tell me where you're from. Shout out to VA. Shout out to Miami. Florida's in the house. Always representing. I love my international nurses. So let me know if you're here. 7,600 nurses and the virtual trainer. Our community is growing. Our nurses are, they're, they're passing NCLEX. They're getting their license. They're moving on. And then they are established for the nursing career of their dreams. That's what I want for you guys. I want you guys to love your nursing career. Yes. And I'm so happy to be with you guys here. Again, if it's your first time, shout out for me, New Mexico, mm -hmm, North Carolina. Lina, welcome. This is your time. I'm not going to wait any longer. We're going to get into our first NCLEX question. Here it is. Are you ready? Pow! Philippines. I see you, Ontario, Canada. I love it. We have nurses from all over here with us today. Question number one. Dig in. Dig in. Here we go. A nurse is caring for a client diagnosed with strep throat. What is the priority statement for the nurse to make. Okay. Number one, all children in the house should be tested. Two, take all medications. Or four, monitor temperature for signs of infection. Hey, we are talking about strep throat here. This is your time. All right. It's simply, it's simply, what is the priority statement? So that means here, guys, when we're taking priority means all of these could be right. It means that all of them look good, right? However, what is the most important? What absolutely does the nurse have to say? Okay. The answer to that, I will wait no further. Three, two, one is yes, number two. Most of us got number two right. Some of us were between two and four. Um, two is the correct statement because this is going to eliminate the infection. We have to make sure that the, the client understands that out of everything I say to you, you have these medications, you have to take, take them, you're going to have even worse complications, okay? So this is a priority statement, the treatment. Now, a lot of you guys picked number four. I knew it would be a distractor, <laughs> okay? Number four says monitor for signs of infection, monitor temperature for signs of infection. Well, do we need to, are we, are we, um, how can I say this? How, how can I say this that makes sense? Are we concerned that an infection is present or do we already know that the patient has an infection? Do we need to monitor a temperature for signs of infection or is there already an, an infection in place? There is, the patient has strep throat. So there's no need for us to monitor the temperature for that. We know it's there. So we need to treat it, okay? We need to treat it. And the other two are correct too. I mean. The thing about these questions that make it so difficult for NCLEX is that they all have truth to them, right? So number one says um, all children in the house should be tested. Yeah, we know strep throat is contagious. So is that a valid statement? Absolutely, that's a valid statement. But is that more of a priority than taking your medication? It's not. And so that's why we have to, that's what we have to be able to distinguish what is the most important, okay? Because if we stress, uh, consume two liters of fluid a day, yeah, that's great. But if the patient is not taking their medication, then um, that's an issue. Shout out to the nurses who came on to say, hey, I passed Tansy. Um, I passed Shantia. Uh, thanks to Remar, I passed NCLEX as well. Thank you, congratulations. Guys, all right, we're into the studying. Here we go. Oh, question number two. This is a good one. The nurse is orienting a new nurse to the cardiac step-down unit. 
the new nurse reports that there are too many tasks to do and it is overwhelming, okay? Which response is best by the nurse? Number one, this is the, this is the response, this is the advice. Attempt to pass medications first as this is the most important function. Two, try to delegate as much as possible to the ancillary staff. Three, complete the tasks that take less time first. Or four, complete a to-do list and prioritize tasks daily. Okay. What is the best advice, okay, what is the the best response (laughs) that the nurse should give, okay, what is it, what do you guys say it is, and while you're putting the answers down, I just want to read one of the comments from Kristenicia, she says, hi, Regina, I passed my NCLEX RN last year with Remar, still wants to hear your voice today, I have been enjoying your first shift book, proud to let you know, that I was given the best customer services are in last week. <laughs> awesome. I got to bust in on this to tell you guys about once you pass your NCLEX, get first shift, get first shift. That's amazing um, to have that customer services award. That is amazing. Okay. So here we're talking about a situation where a new nurse says, I can't do it. It's too much. What is the best response by the nurse? It looks like everybody's pretty much going with number four, pretty much going with number four. Let's see if that's the right answer. Hey, absolutely. Number four is the best answer. But let me tell you something. These other options are what you will hear if you work in a hospital. I'm telling you, I have heard every single one of these other options. Number one, um, medications are most important. So if you're a new nurse, uh, other nurses will tell you, just pass your meds first. Get all of the meds out first. However, this is a one-track approach. This limits the potential to see other medical emergencies. It is not good advice, okay? Because in some instances, medications are not the priority. So don't fall for that trap, guys, as a new nurse. Um, two, Two says essentially... If nursing is too much for you, you can't handle it, try to give away as much as your responsibility as possible. (laughs) Try to give it away to other people. Try to delegate as much as possible. Oh my goodness, how dangerous is this? How dangerous is this for nurses to think that they can just delegate as much as possible to nurses' assistants? No, don't do it, all right? Um, You have to really, really think, do you want somebody else doing your job? All right. You have to really, really think that. Okay. Three, just do the things that don't take as much time up. Just do the small, do all of the small things first. That's the way to handle nursing. That is a terrible, that is a terrible suggestion for new nurses because the things that take the least amount of time, Sometimes they're not that important. And so you can go in and say, okay, I am just going to, um, I'm just going to teach this patient how to use incentive spirometry. It's going to take me five minutes. So I'll do all that little stuff first. However, you might have somebody with a critical, um, critical lab value that needs uh, uh, IV medication. And so that might take you longer, or you might need somebody with a wound dressing that needs to take place. And so you really have to do number four. You have to look at, you have to look at what do I have to do for the whole day and then prioritize in that way. Okay. So these are really great NCLEX questions because what they are doing is they're allowing you to demonstrate Not only do you know nursing content, but you know how to carry out the skills that you have been taught. And so these are very important for management of care and coordinated care, all right? Whether you're taking RN, management of care, PN, uh, coordinated care, all right? So good job. You guys are getting this right. You guys are getting these ones right. I'm really happy about that. 
All right. Okay. Let us move on. Let us move on. Let's do number three here. Um, oh, I like this one too. This is a scenario question. All right, here we go. Let me read it. A client with a history of drug abuse is admitted to the medical surgical unit. The client has a bleeding diabetic ulcer with poor circulation. During evening rounds, the client becomes confused to time and place and attempts to get out of bed in an unsafe manner. The charge nurse recommends a chemical restraint. Which is the first action by the nurse? Okay. Number one says obtaining the vital signs every two hours. Two, obtaining a capillary glucose level. Three, applying a vest restraint for safety. Four, administering a sedative medication. Okay. Um, and you're off. You're off. You're off. What do you guys say it is going to be? I'm not making any comments on this one. I want you to just use your best judgment um, here. Got a lot going on with this patient. <laughs> a lot going on here. I see the answers rolling, rolling, rolling. And think about the patient, though. You got a patient... Um, they are trying to get out of bed. They have uh, a bleeding ulcer. And also, uh, they are confused to time and place. They are confused to time and place. Shout out to the top fans in here, the supporters. I, I like seeing that. All right. And what I want you guys to do is, with scenarios like this, you got to go with your first mind. Okay? You got to go with your first mind here. So... Don't second guess yourself. Don't talk yourself out of it. Some of you guys are testing this week. Some of you guys are testing tomorrow. What are you going to pick? What's the safest thing? <laughs> Mars. I'm just past my NCLEX. Thank you, Remar, for your Monday motivation. You are definitely part of the journey. Ah, yes. <laughs> All right. I'm showing the answer to you guys. No sense of waiting any longer. Here we go. Correct answer is... Number two, you got to obtain that capillary glucose level. Hey, this is going to, this is part of what? Assessment. You guys know the nursing process. No matter how you dress it up, whatever scenario it is, you got to go back to your nursing process. This patient needs assessment before anything else. If you get the assessment right, then you can direct the care. Come on. The, the, the client has a diabetic foot ulcer. That tells me that this is a person who has more than likely uncontrolled diabetes, right? You start getting into the complications of diabetes. You start getting into the ulcers. Your fingers are missing. Your toes are missing. You know, you, you, you have sores that are not healing. That tells me that your blood sugar is running wild. It's out of control. It's wreaking all kind of havoc. You're blind, things like that from diabetes. So somebody with poor diabetes control is very likely to have the highs and the lows um, during my, my care for them. So it says here that they have a diabetic ulcer, right? So that's a whole bunch right there. That's a whole bunch. Um, and then it says that they become confused the charge nurse, this was a huge distractor. The charge nurse recommends a chemical restraint. What? Who is this person? Right? Um, so if we look at the choices, I threw that in there because I wanted you guys to like uh, be, be like really going back and forth about, oh, but the charge nurse said a chemical restraint. We never put on restraints first. Restraints in general are usually a last resort. If you choose that for NCLEX, Oh, no, it's a bad thing. Right. Um, so uh, so it says here, of course, two is correct, because that's going to give us our assessment. Um, applying a vest restraint for safety. Absolutely not. There are so many things that you do before you slap a restraint on somebody. Oh, my goodness. No. And so three and four were kind of the same. Four is a restraint as well. It's a chemical restraint. 
But anyhow, in regards to it, we don't know if we have an order. We don't we don't know if we have an order for that chemical restraint. OK, so it is very it is very, very important that you understand you understand that no matter who says put on a restraint, whether it's the charge nurse here, the family member, the healthcare provider, whatever it is, like you really have to say, is this the best thing, right, for my patient? Because there's so many things we can do before we put on a restraint for a patient. And so um, the suggestion of a restraint is usually a distractor, all right? Because you could do bed alarms, you could do sitters, right, in the room with the patient. And so um, you have to be very, very careful. Not too many of you guys picked that one. Um, so I am happy about that, right? Not too many of you guys picked that one, but you got to be extra careful. You got to be extra careful that you do not get distracted by these very good distractors, okay? All right, let's move on. Here we go. Here we go. Question number four says this, a client taking metformin for one week reports diarrhea and gastrointestinal discomfort. What action does the nurse take? Number one, reassure the client that symptoms will diminish. Two, use only the client's sliding scale insulin instead. Three, administer metformin on an empty stomach. Four, hold the metformin until symptoms subside. Okay, here we go. Um, remember, if you did Remar Nurse University, we talked about metformin um, in last month, right? We talked about it. So this one should be relatively painless to you guys. All right. Relatively painless to you guys who've studied this topic. All right. Roll those answers in. Smash that share button. This is this is how to pass in Clex. This is what we do every Monday, coming together to study. Oh, you guys are doing beautiful today. Okay, I'm gonna show the answer because I think we're all on one accord, kind of between one and two. I see. I see between one and two. All right, the correct answer, guys, is actually right. You do have the GI disturbance. So you have the um, nausea, you have the diarrhea, right? These are all very common. So these are not reasons why we would have our patient get off of medication, okay? Um, maintaining the therapy is going to be the most important. Metformin should be taken with food. It, it will help to decrease the GI disturbances, um, and we would not hold the medication, all right? All right, let's do let's do another question. Let's do our final question, you guys. I am so happy that you guys are doing well. You, so many people are coming on saying I'm passing with Remar Review. Fred, I see you. I see you. Congratulations. All right. Question number question number five says this. Oh, good, good question. A nurse cares for a client with cirrhosis while making menu selections. Which of the following does the nurse tell the client to choose? All right, here we go. The answer choices are, number one is this, ham sandwich and cottage cheese. Two, hamburger and garlic fries. Three, canned soup and cheese sandwich. Or four, chicken and plain potatoes. Here we go. Oh, that's making me hungry. Everything here is making me so hungry. What's the best for the client with cirrhosis? What is the best for the client with cirrhosis? What do you guys think? You guys are on a roll today. Oh my goodness. This is fantastic. This is really fantastic to see because we've done questions from so many different topics <laughs> in nursing. Okay. 
Rolling, rolling, rolling in. A uh, lots of number ones, ham sandwich and cottage cheese. You like in the cottage cheese, huh? Okay. And a lot of number fours. A lot of number fours. So the correct answer for everybody out there participating, almost 700 nurses. Okay. Almost 700 nurses. Um, we have, we have. Number four is the correct answer. Yes, because we need to avoid sodium. We need to avoid sodium. So the ham sandwich, you guys know ham is a salted meat. You got to avoid sodium with clients with cirrhosis, okay? Anything in a can is preserved. We use um, preservatives. We use salt as the. So things in a can are not going to be um, appropriate. Uh, so the only thing that we have here is the chicken and the plain potatoes. That is going to be the best choice. So shout out to you guys that got that right. Hey, this is what it's all about. Coming together. We do this every Monday. We do this every Monday. Yes, yeah, so if this is your first time, this is what we do. We talk about content that we're studying and we make sure that we know it before we pass um, our NCLEX exam before we take our test to pass our NCLEX exam. Now, there are some things I want to tell you guys. Remember, if you are testing for your NCLEX exam this week, this month, next month, all the way up until September 30th, you have to have a mask on during your test. So make sure that you bring a mask with you. Um, here in parts of Ohio, they're mandatory. You have to have them all the time. Don't show up without a mask. Please make sure you have it. Also remember that during this time, even though you're taking the modified NCLEX, you still can ask for your accommodations. So if you're, if you're, um, you know, if you if you need more time to take your exam, you can request that accommodation, and it will be granted to you, right? Um, so don't forget that, and think about it. If you've had accommodations in the past, go for them this time as well, too. All right. Um, another question that I was getting about the test, if your ATT has expired, remember there's an extension on ATTs. If your license or if your identification has expired, you can still use that to take your test. So as long as your name and everything else is the same, you can still use those documents to test. There is a lot of modifications. All right. Um, if you run out of time during your exam, you cannot request more time just like on the fly. But if you have set up a previous accommodation, um, you can take the exam. There's been people who've been given two days to take the exam. Um, and so you'll get if you request a two day exam, you definitely are going to have to prove why you need two days. But you'll get four hours one day and four hours the next day. All right. Perfect. Okay, so that's just some more information. I'm going to continue on with our program, and then at the end, I'll answer your questions as best as I can, okay? All right, also, a uh, shout out to the people who are getting the virtual trainer. Remember, if you are an international nurse, you can still get the VT. You just need to go to remarnurse.com, all right? And then that will put in, um, that will allow you to put in whether you are an international nurse or a domestic nurse living here in the United States, okay? We're still doing the discount on the VT. So it is 189 for the, for the program plus the two books. And everybody, that's the price for the virtual trainer program plus your two books that you get, which is the VT workbook and the quick facts book, okay? And these be home in order to sign for these books because the sure. So, oh, sorry, I didn't realize I was backwards. <laughs> All right, so it's the Quick Facts and it's the VT workbook. Um, but yeah, so some people say, hey, my books never came, they were never delivered, but indeed they were. All right, you have to be there to sign. All right. All right. So this is what it is about here, getting the content that you need to pass your exam. And speaking of passing your exam, I gotta give my Remar Roses. Um, to Nurse Rachel. Oh my goodness. Oh no, no. This isn't Nurse Rachel. This is Nurse Fina. Nurse Rachel is next. Let me tell you. Um, so she says, I would like to thank Remar Review for awesome study material after taking the NCLEX for the seventh time in eight years. 
using multiple reviews. Um, that's just amazing. Like seven times, seven, 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 seven. Um, that is just the that is just the perfect number of perfection right there. She um, she says um, she got the VT last month on June the eighth. All right, so just like. 30 days later, here she is. She says she passed using Remar this time. Thank you for everything. And so that's what I want for you guys. I mean, imagine getting your license in the next 30 days. Who have passed their NCLEX. But she actually said, you know what? Um, she's studying. She actually hasn't passed today, but she has the VT. And she says, as I sit here and study, I'm so tickled that I got an 85% on um, on my exam and I still failed, right? So she got an 85% and she still failed. And she said, that's the beauty of the program. You have to keep doing it over and over and over again until you get it perfect, all right? Um, and so that's what we all want. We want the 100% pass. We want that We want that excellence, all right? Um, and I love for students to be in the zone and have that mentality where it's like, I want nothing but the best, right? I'm not trying to get around anything. I want to go for the gold. And so that's what I want for you guys. Whether you're in the review or the before the books arrive section, I want you guys to get that 100%. All right. Also, 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 hey, this is where we get into the part. And I think everybody in here is in one place in this chart. And so I want you to look at the chart and I really want you to evaluate where you are for this week, okay? So um, the Monday motivation, our NCLEX motivation for today is simply what zone are you in? What zone are you in? And there's four zones that people typically find themselves in. And so here's the chart right here. Um, and so the four zones, I don't know if you can see it, you guys should be able to see it, but the four zones are the comfort zone, the fear zone, the learning zone, and the growth zone, okay? So I'm just gonna talk about each zone and I want you guys to kind of get into, okay, where am I? The comfort zone. When you're in the comfort zone, you feel safe and in control. You have no, you have no worries about anything. You are just going to continue to live your life and nothing's gonna change. That's the comfort zone. You have no plans of changing any area of your nursing career or your life, okay? Because we're talking about NCLEX here. The fear zone. Now, some of us, we, we want to have a change in our nursing career. We want to have a change in where we are, but we're in the fear zone. And the fear zone is we lack self-confidence, right? The fear zone. We lack self-confidence. We don't think we can do it. Um, we, we we find excuses why we can't do it. I, I can't, I can't pursue this. I don't have time. The kids, um, my job, my money, I don't, I can't do it. Or we let other people, other people's opinion affect us moving to the next level. My teacher told me I wasn't going to be a nurse. I did really bad in school. My family told me I just need to focus on, you know, working at Walmart. I'm, I'm spending too much time on nursing. It's not for me. You know, some of us are in the fear zone and I get a lot of emails from people new to Remar who are in the fear zone. A lot of people will email me and say, ah, I'm not really sure if this is the program for me. Uh, you know, I don't really know if this is real. I never heard of Remar before. Like all these excuses. Listen, do you want help or do you not want help? Right. Do you want help or do you not want help? Um, but it's hard to get people out of the fear zone. But once you take that first step and this is where um, this is where I want everybody to kind of move into like. Right. This is why I do Monday motivation, because I'm trying to pull you guys into this learning zone. Right. Where you can assess. And a lot of you are like, yeah, I'm learning zone. Go ahead and put the zone you're in. Joy says fear zone. Tyra says learning zone. All right. So um, I want you guys to all initially get into the learning zone and then transition into the growth zone. So the learning zone, you're, you're dealing with problems and challenges. You can acknowledge them, but you're not letting them stop you. 
right? You're getting new skills. You're learning new information. This is why we come here because we want to learn something new. Tiffany's in the learning zone. Yes. Um, and then you, 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 you extend your comfort zone. I like that, right? You extend your comfort zone, right? Um, and so you say, I feel safe here. I feel safe in the learning zone. Maria, I'm in the learning zone. Nadia, I'm in the fear zone, okay? Um, and so I want you guys to be thinking, what's keeping me here? right? What's keeping me here? Jackie says, I was in the fear zone, but now I'm in the learning zone, staying positive. Absolutely. You have to stay positive, right? And so um, what I find is that, what I find is that once you're in the learning zone for just, for um, once you're in the learning zone and you really connect with, um, you connect with the information that we present here, particularly when it comes to NCLEX, you, you, you build your confidence, right? You're finding that, let, yes, you can learn, right? Because when you're in the learning zone, you have a different mentality that I'm capable. I'm capable of learning. I'm capable of passing this test. And so once you embrace that mentality that I actually can do this, then I think you can get into the growth zone where we add the I will and I must. So like anybody that says that I can, I will, I must, you're in the growth zone. Right. And so in the growth zone is where we find our purpose. We got to pass NCLEX. I have to do it. <laughs> you live your dreams out. You get that license. Right. You set new goals. I got to get my license. Not only am I just going to get a license, I'm going to get a license in the next six weeks. OK. Um, and then and then you master it. You get through it. I love I love Nurse Rachel because she's like. I, I, I didn't, I, I want the hundred percent, right? I have a new objective. All right. Um, and so this is why, this is why I thought this chart was so, um, so essential to this week's motivation is because it really, it really takes a lot to acknowledge, Hey, I'm in the fear zone. I am, I'm in the fear zone. Um, and, and the thing about it is, you can't be in two zones at the same time. You can't be, all right? You have to be in one. I mean, so it's like somebody can't tell me I'm in the comfort zone and the growth zone. It's not possible. You're not, all right? You're not, in, you're, you're, you're not, you're fooling yourself if you think you are, all right? If you're in the fear zone, you're not in the fear zone and the, and the learning zone. No, you're in one. One is dominating you. All right. And 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 the thing about it is, if you find yourself on your test date in the fear zone, guess what's going to happen with your test results? If you're in the fear zone mentally during your NCLEX exam, oh, it's not going to go so well for you. OK. And so that is when that is when. um that is when, you know, you have people that literally take themselves out the game. Rose says, can you be in the growth zone and drop down to the fear zone? Um, I think so. I think so. I think if you are not committed, I forgot which nurse said that, but if you're not committed to that positivity that, that is required to move forward, then yes, it's very easy because the, the fear zone is really close to the comfort zone. And so it's very easy for you to be, you know, high one minute and like, yes, I have all these objectives that I want to set. I have the intentions to set. I've been working towards them, but a challenge comes in your life, a sickness, an illness, a, you lose your job, something like that. It can definitely take you out of your growth zone and back into a fear zone where you're insecure, right? Or you're not thinking about it. Um, and, I, and so I think that's why it's so important for, for us to have, you know, Monday motivations and things like that, because um, really you control, your mentality controls where you are. Your mentality controls where you are, all right? And where you see yourself at. So again, we say here, you know, I can, I will, I must. That's that's a that's a mentality of somebody in a growth mindset. And so whatever we have to do, we do in order to get there. It's kind of like, you know, fake it until you make it. 
Um, Mel says, I think the growth zone is passing in click. So I'm learning until I achieve mastery. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Um, I don't feel ready for the learning zone. All right. Um, I'm in the learning zone. Okay. And so that's what this was about. This chart was just about, hey, you taking an honest assessment of where you are and what you need to do to get to the next level, because only you know that. Right. So my thing is get the VT, get in there, but you can get the VT. But if you're in the fear zone and you find excuses not to study, you're not going to do well. Right. Um, and so you have to have a combination of both. You you have to have the, the desire to get out of your current zone, right? If it's fear or comfort and um, do what's necessary to maintain a learning or growth zone, right? And those are, those are the most challenging. Those are absolutely the most challenging, okay? So we say, I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX. I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX, all right? All right. Um, let me see. So, Shanae, and, and I love I love these comments. People are just putting what they are. I'm in the fear zone. I've been out of school for a long time. I took the test two times and gave up. I went through a horrible divorce, and I'm still stuck in the same place. Yeah, I decided I have to do this. I went to school, and I must and I will. Yes, the Most High keeps showing me I can do this. As of today, I'm going to pass. Yes. So listen, make that commitment to yourself. Make a vow to yourself. As of today, I'm going to get out of the fear zone. I love that. Um, quick facts is the bomb. You can do it. Thank you, guys. Um, Rose says, yes, I think what's going on with me now after being in the growth zone, all pumped up. But after failing, there's more motivation. So I dropped. There's no more motivation. So I dropped back down to the fear zone. Okay, so you did ask about the two zones. Yeah, and, and I think that's that's what happens. Sometimes we have these setbacks or we have these challenges, um, but the most successful people in life are the people who get up after failing. They are the people that when things happen and challenge happens, they don't stay down. You know, if you think about, you know, inventors, do you think, um, uh, do you think Thomas Jefferson, you know, or uh, why did I say Thomas Jefferson? I did not mean to say Thomas Jefferson. I meant to say Edison. Um, you think he got the light bulb right on the first try? You know, um, these these people who do amazing things, you think they they go out on their very first try, you know, they get the gold, they get, you know, whatever. No, it doesn't happen like that. Like you experience tremendous setbacks and tremendous failures before you obtain the highest level of achievement, right? Um, let's see. I can, I will, I must. How did you know about my issues so fast? I don't, I don't know. I'm just speaking in general terms here. Um, somebody says, you're really touching my heart right now. Yes. And I think, you know, this is the, this is the other side of NCLEX. This is the other side of not only NCLEX, but nursing in general. Nursing is a, a discipline. It's a job that requires thick skin. And you don't always get patted on the back for everything you do. You can literally save somebody's life and nobody acknowledges that heroic effort because it's, it's the expectation. We see nurses right now working in hospitals, diagnosed with COVID, coming back to work to take care of people, you know, without getting hazard pay, without a lot of nurses are not getting hazard pay, things like that. And it's just like, when you commit to this discipline of nursing, oh, you have to have a resilience that, um, you know, it's just, it's on the other level, right? Um, somebody says, 25 years out of school taking NCLEX PN. Okay. All right. You can do it. All right. Um, I found the pediatrics quick fact yesterday and ran to Staples to print it. My God, I love it. <laughs> awesome. So in your file vault, in the quick facts, there's a lot of cool resources there. Yeah. So again, last time we are looking for the zone. OK, we are looking for the zones here um, and where we are striving to be, where we are striving to be everyone. All right. So I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX. I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX. Um, this is the mentality that we have to have, guys. Thank you so much for studying with me. Thank you so much for studying with me today. Um, we do this every Monday. We definitely do this every Monday. Somebody says, um, I can say now with Remar, I just started my nursing school. Absolutely. 
absolutely absolutely all right um people are asking when will the question bank be out okay so here's the update with the question bank um we are in the we have the question bank but we are testing it we wanted to make sure that it was functional in every aspect and so um, I didn't want to just release it to you guys without it being fully tested. So I'm testing it. I'm testing it to make sure one of the things that we saw early on was that the rationales weren't always shown. So if you created an exam and you didn't hit a certain button, then you wouldn't see the rationales. Well, that's not good. You guys always want to see the rationales. So I'm just having the developer look at that. And um, so I was talking to him last night. <sighs> <laughs> and he's working on it. And so um, as soon as those things are perfect, then I will release it because I could have you guys in it right now. I could open it up, but then I would be getting hundreds of emails about why, you know, this isn't showing up. And so I want to just make sure that it's perfect when I release it to you guys. So that's why it's delayed. Uh, that's why it's delayed right now. So as soon as it is available, Trust me, I will tell you guys so you can get into it because I know you want those questions. All right. But the questions that we did today and usually in the questions that we actually did for the last three or four weeks have been coming directly from the question bank. All right. Um, let's see. Somebody says, where is the pediatric quick facts? The pediatric quick facts is in the file vault of your virtual trainer. So you're able, it's a whole other book that I created specifically for pediatrics. So if you like the quick facts for NCLEX, I created a quick facts for pediatrics. All right. Um, when are you going to have a pop-up NCLEX review? Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, honestly, I'm thinking this week. Um, I, I did teach you something Thursday. So I'm thinking I will go live again on Thursday and do another NCLEX review. Okay. Um, how do I get your content review? So the content review is the virtual trainer. Check out the website here, remarnurse.com, if you want to get the VT, all right? If you want to get the content review, that is the only review that I have. That is the only review that I have, and it's what everybody's using, okay? All right. Okay, so yes, we can, we will, we must. Another thing I want to say is for those of you who have um, signed up for the virtual baby shower that I'll be doing in September, Thank you so much for the gifts that we've been getting off the registry. Thank you guys so much. I posted I posted um, some of the um, I posted some of the gifts in the Facebook group. But if you're not on Facebook and you watch on YouTube, then uh, you don't see those pictures and those questions. I put questions as well in the events group. So I just want to thank you guys um, again for all of the gifts that we've been getting. It's it's just amazing. Um, Velma says, yes, it was great. Teach Thursday. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Velma. Um, thank you for your motivation. Yes, yes, yes. Can I do the VT without the VT workbook? Um, no, I would say no, only because the virtual trainer, I'm just going to, um, just address this. This is a really good question. Um, the virtual trainer is an experience. Okay. So it is a comprehensive lecture review, but also part of the learning is not just by you watching, but it's actually by you taking notes. It's actually by you filling out the workbook. It's actually by you, you know, processing this information. And so um, I, I'm trying to think what I can liken it to. It's likening to you just sitting in a class and you're listening to somebody speak to you as opposed to actively being engaged, taking notes and thinking and answering questions. And so, um, and I know my book is not going to be clear, but anyways, in this book, maybe can we zoom in? Uh, hold on. Give me one second. In this book, there are so many, um, there are, a, there's just a ton of things that are already prepared for you. And so one of the beauties of the book is that you are adding to information that's already presented in here. All right, <laughs> baby Shiloh, yes. You're adding to information that's already presented in here. And so if you don't have this book, for whatever reason, if you don't have this book, and, and especially if you don't have the Quick Facts book, then there is a lot that you will not be getting. 
All right. There's a lot that you there's a lot of information that you won't be getting. And so, yes, it's interactive, Yolanda, and it challenges you. I mean, the clinical judgment activities you'll miss. And the thing about my reviews and my lectures, guys, is that I don't um, I don't lecture very long. So a lot of the things that I'm not lecturing on, I put it in a different area. So I'm putting it in the clinical judgment or I'm putting it in the homework or I'm putting it in the quick facts. And so you really get information from a lot of different sources in the program. All right. Um, somebody says, I don't have the VT workbook. I'm taking notes word from word. OK, uh, you have to do it. I mean, you have to do what works for you. I tried to make it easy for you guys. Um, as best as I can. All right. Um, somebody says, how do I sign up for the virtual baby shower review? Um, go to our Facebook page and in the events on Remar for NCLEX, you will be able to sign up for it there. And I think it's like uh, maybe 150 people signed up and 200 or 300 put there might be going. There will be a workbook for that event. And I'm still working on that um, as well. All right. Um, somebody said I took notes word, word for word, even with the VT workbook. I got you. I got you. Um, let's see here. Thank you. Be blessed. Okay. So can you put the baby shower gifts on YouTube? What I'm going to have to do is I guess I'm going to have to create a video because there's it's tough for me to just post something on, on YouTube with the baby shower gifts because I have a lot of them. All right. Um, here we go. Do you have pediatrics in the VT too? Yes, I do. What time on Thursday? Usually I do, when I do teach you something Thursdays, it's in the evening. So I think the last teach you something Thursday that we did was at 9 p.m. Eastern time. All right. So it'll probably be around 8 or 9 p.m. Eastern time for teach you something. But if you turn on your notifications, then you'll know when I go live. Okay. Um, trust every word she says. She's the best NCLEX instructor. Thank you again for making it possible. Absolutely. Um, because, okay, because of Remar, I'm so much more confident. Thank you, Regina, for this time. Okay. Um, somebody says, but when I checked on Friday to see everything was sold out. Uh, yes, 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 yes. That is possible too. Um, some of her products are let me see. I'll, I'll have to put the link up in the, I'll have to put the link up somewhere uh, uh, on the video. Um, some of the Remar products, when we get them in, they sell out very quickly and we're trying our best to keep everything in stock for some reason, well, not for some reason, but nursing is, is just, people are drawing their minds and their hearts to nursing. And so they have, they have this idea where I got to get out of the fear zone. I've got to get in the learning zone. And so people are really gravitating to Remar right now and buying up all the products, which is a great thing because that means the community grows. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Has anyone taken the inquiry? Okay. So anything else? So one of the best things about Remar for you guys with the specific questions is that we do have not only the Facebook group, but the, but the discussion board inside of the virtual trainer. And so if you have any uh, questions about your specific experience, why is your ATT taking so long? you know, how fast did you get your results in California? The Facebook group is perfect for that because so many people will answer you. All right. All right. So I'm going to get out of here, guys. Thank you so much for your time. It's been almost an hour. We've been studying together. All right. And so uh, with that, I thank you for your time. It's a true pleasure when we can get together and study for NCLEX. Uh, and so I hope to see you guys this week. I hope to have all of the new products out for you. Um, as well, and uh, look forward to everybody passing their NCLEX. Remember, get out of the comfort zone, get out of the fear zone, is learning zone and growth zone this week only. So let's get there, guys. All right, I'll see you guys later. I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX. <laughs>